lottery winnings, landing a successful career, jet setting far away from any burdens. Some of you may have pictured aspiration and growth. Some of you, split second chance. Some of you may not even have a definite idea yet. But we all hope of a dream opportunity, having it all mapped out and pursuing for the long run, providing us with monetary, successful and security as a reimbursement. There are several motivational factors that come when we're looking for opportunities, and that's what we're self-creation. Although we've got many students in this audience tonight, I wasn't as educationally gifted. I struggled with learning setbacks and never feeling like I could quite fit the status quo of education. It felt all the students around me had a plan for me. To counteract, I pushed extracurricular activities onto my plate, whether it was campaigning school elections, coppicing a woodland, or sorting shelves at the local library. This was my participative opportunity discovery. A secure criteria for a task, usually set up by employers, volunteers, or organisations. They were always set out as a one way that I could sign up to do. And I was obsessed with doing as many as I could outside of school. To me, it made me feel like I had secure potential rather than what the school tried to keep under shadows. I was able to embrace who I was and be free and have secure potential that maybe I will be offered a dream opportunity. I was nearing my final year of school and was so excited to get out of there. 2020. Go home. Stay home. We all remember that government announcement. The weight of words shook us into depths. That was it. That was it for my final year of education. That was it for all of my extracurriculars. That was it for my secure potential and what I thought would be my way to a dream opportunity. My world seemingly flipped upside down in the space of a government announcement. There, I began to seek for a desperate chance. I went on job sites and was scrolling for hours, applying for any job I could. I left behind any dreams that I had in pursuit of anywhere that would even look at my CV. I felt burnt out, hopeless, and didn't feel like I had any future ahead of me. A few months on, I was scrolling through school emails waiting for movement on my sixth form results. There, I came across an email from Careers Hub, an email I'd usually ignore. They were never right for me. But for once, the email headline caught my attention. Youth participation in politics, online work experience, previously in London, your chance. I looked at the email and thought, this is the first time in quite a while I've been intrigued by an open offer. What the heck? It will give me something to keep my mind off the endless job searching I was going through. Logging on and staring at the screen in front of me, I wasn't expecting that much. Grace, what do you want to work on this week through your work experience. Whoa, you're asking me? I'd only ever done work for other people, but never for myself. My head was in a spin, I was burnt out, I'd had a long day. But somehow, as if it was in my head already, I replied, I want there to be better rights for disabled people in employment and education providers. And it felt good to say that because it was something that I felt true and something that I had made myself. 
Over that week of work experience, I worked on a project that I was passionate in, creating resources and presentations that I was proud of. I grew in the confidence to speak to, to Parliament ministers and a small willingness in myself to try when it felt dwindled more than ever. I took that week and stepped back. I embraced my lack of control. I learned more about myself. I forgave myself and also gave myself the key to unlocking goals and achievements. A few months down the line, I was speaking with my public speaking mentor. Instead of the pandemic, as most conversations tended to fall, we were talking about goals that we'd had in life. I was flicking through a stack of post-its of things that I'd written down over the years when I came across Write Your Own Book. And it spoke to me in the same soft and caring way like the director did encouraging me to think for myself and make that opportunity. So, I ran back to the organisation, declaring, I have an idea and I need your support. Months of writing and several copyright laws later, I produced my first book, Generation COVID, How Young People Responded to the COVID-19 Crisis a collective of young people's stories from up and down the country, fit with an anthology and a detailed description about what had happened through the past few years. I looked back at my book on one of the biggest sites in the world. I'd made that opportunity. I made that opportunity for myself. This was self-creation. Writing the book also helped me to realise the changing mindset of young people as well. How we kept ourselves motivated throughout the most difficult times the past few years have given us. I received several stories from up and down the country and going through them, I noticed almost every story started with a situation but almost always ended in hope. A reason as to why they kept going and why they kept pursuing their dreams, not letting no pandemic get in the way. Starting businesses, podcasts, and even new career paths to save lives. Let me tell you about Joe, a young boy who originally had dreams of working in the theatre industry, one of the hardest hit in the midst. He had planned to go to university and was sorting out his finances and accommodation. 2020, go home, stay home, and there it went. He began to work on the patient transport service for the NHS, taking patients to and from where they needed to go. As he started his training, and as the training became more developed, he discovered, this is what I want to do. I want to become a paramedic. Thanks to the pandemic, he discovered that opportunity and has become one of the most vital people in this country at the moment. I never imagined my first year out of school being quite like this. None planned, but all embraced and reshaped from how I saw the pandemic and how I could help myself and the wider community when it felt more broken than ever. I, like many peers, am still discovering what my path is. I've only just turned 20. But yet, despite not knowing what I want to pluck out of this concept of life, I have forgiven myself the pressure in looking for perfection, and instead, embracing the opportunities as they arise. Upon reflection of what the pandemic has taken, but also given to me, I've realised that opportunity seeking and discovery has changed. There are lots of different avenues. Participation, desperation, self-creation. But there is always one more. Luck. Luck is a chance opportunity. 
a way to power through to the top against all the odds. But we know it's a statistical nightmare. To quote goal for Gary Player, the harder I work, the luckier I get. With these in mind, we mustn't forget the avenues that opportunity come from. We may feel on rocky ground at times, and we may feel like we don't know where we're going. But I encourage you to dig deeper, because opportunity may be hiding there, ready to showcase to be exactly what you're looking for. Thank you. As part of the experience, breakfast, lunch and a glass of Prosecco were included for those who attended. This new and engaging presentation already in the works, we hope TEDx events return in the new future. This is Julia Finnegan reporting for the University of Buckingham.